Hey, what's up everybody? Today, we're gonna to be building the new server for the new house. Um, at my parents' place, I was using an old Lenovo workstation kind of desktop. Very simple, it was mainly just doing uh, network attached storage, some Plex, and then a few small self-hosted apps. This new server is gonna be doing a lot more and it's also gonna have a ton more storage as you can see right in front of me here. So really excited for that. And before I go into all these components, I wanna talk about what the appeal is of having a home server. And as I've mentioned, network attached storage is a pretty big one. It's nice to be able to store all of your stuff off of your computers so that if you're hopping between a desktop and a laptop, you can always have access to those files. You can buy computers with less storage and then put stuff that you don't need all the time because you know most storage, if someone's gonna have four or five terabytes of storage on their computer, most of that storage is not gonna be used all the time. It's only gonna be used when they wanna go look at some pictures or when they wanna go look at a video or when they wanna grab some music or what have you. People typically use around like one to two terabytes, I, I would say, max in a computer, especially if you're downloading a ton of large games. One to two terabytes is quite a bit. Um, I use a lot more than that, but I'm also kind of a psychopath and I use a lot more than I need to. So we'll go over some of the apps that I'm planning on using, but the main gist of it is going to be network attached storage. It's gonna be my media server. I'm gonna be storing all this YouTube stuff off of on there because right now I was using a lot of external hard drives that I eventually plan on maybe moving into the server. They're really big drives though, so I'll have to kind of work, do some workarounds and a bunch of self-hosted apps. And we'll go over those after we talk about the components. With the components in mind, first thing is the motherboard, CPU, and RAM. So we have a Gigabyte B360M motherboard here, ITX form factor. It was a pretty good deal. I bought it for under $70. Um, exactly, I bought it for 62 US dollars. And I've already got the RAM and the CPU installed in here because as soon as it came in last summer, I've been holding on to some of these parts for a while. Um, as soon as this came in, I ended up putting it together and testing it, making sure it worked because whenever you buy something on eBay, you wanna make sure it works. So the CPU that we have in here is an Intel i5-8500T. Now that is a pretty good CPU for what we're gonna be using it for. It's got quick sync for all of the media encoding and it's gonna do a plenty good job for us, so that's great. And then I had uh, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance laying around. So that's a pretty small cost for me. I, you know, it was something that I had purchased for another computer and that computer is just kind of sitting on a shelf right now. So I can't remember exactly what was paid for this. I will include it on the screen here, but I'm not gonna include it in the build cost because I didn't pay for it for this build. Now let's go ahead and talk about the drives. So there, in this bubble wrap, are eight six terabyte drives. They are Seagate Xenos 7200 Enterprise refurb drives. I got them for a very good deal. I paid $35 US each for them. I am part of the serverbuilds.net group and they get some really good deals through Rhino Technologies. That's how I bought these. I wanted to do the eight terabyte drives, but unfortunately at the time they were completely out of stock and as soon as they came back into stock, they went out of stock again in an hour. So I had to deal with six terabyte drives for now. Eventually that might go up to something else, or I might just add a few extra drives in here, but we have quite a few in here. This will turn out to be 42 terabytes of usable storage. Now, next up is the NVMe cache, and I'm using this Sabrent Rocket NVMe 4.0, one terabyte drive. Now I don't need a PCIe 4.0 drive for this, but I ended up picking this up for $60 during uh, Black Friday Christmas time or so, and really couldn't beat this for the, for the price. Its endurance is very well rated, so I wanted to make sure I had uh, an NVMe drive with a good endurance as a cache drive. I do plan on adding uh, a hard drive as an additional cache as well to reduce the amount of wear on this SSD cache. I just can't find which box I packed my four terabyte drives into but eventually I'll be adding a four terabyte drive that I've been having laying around going into here as well. Now to control all those drives, we have this HBA from Adaptech and it also is able to do just standard pass through, but it can also do RAID. 
So that's fantastic. We are able to attach all eight drives to here using two um, sets of cables that I paid about $17 for. I got this HBA for under 10 US dollars, which is fantastic. Very good price on this. And that's gonna be a pretty important part of the build. And then to power all of those, I had to get a SATA splitter for all of the power. So needed that because the PSU doesn't have enough connections for all the drives that we're gonna be using. In terms of the cooler, um, didn't really need to factor this in because again, this was something that I had laying around, but we're just gonna be using a Hyper 212 Evo. I think at the time I paid like 10 or $15 US for this. Um, I wouldn't pay more than $20 if you're gonna be putting a fan into the system and using the same kind of uh, components. We're not gonna be overclocking. It's not gonna be doing anything too heavy. Try to get the smallest, least expensive, but still good performing cooler. Thermal Rights Assassin series are also fantastic. If you get the 120, that thing is usually around 16 to $20. So either between that or this, I would probably go with the thermal right. The fans are usually a little bit quieter, but this is what I had laying around. So it's gonna, what I'm gonna use for now. For the PSU, we have this deep cool 750 watt power supply. I picked this up um, for, I believe it was $80 Canadian or so. Um, pretty good price for this. I normally would have gone with, with something a little bit lower, but Right now, PSU prices are kind of crazy. If you go refurbish, you can save quite a bit of money. I didn't want to take that risk and I was able to get this for a pretty decent deal. Um, and if I do decide to put something else into this computer, I can use this for something else, no problem. And then the only other really thing that we have here is a USB drive. This is a really, um, this is a USB 2 drive because that works best for Unraid, which is what we're going to be using for the system. Um, I was able to buy some copies of Unraid before the prices went up. Um, but you could do this with the free trial, see if you like it first, and then choose another uh, operating system. I'm just going with Unraid um, because it's what I think is gonna be best for me. I've been using TrueNAS on the old server. Not really a big fan of it. I think Unraid is gonna be a little bit better, and um, I think it's gonna be a good option. Now, all of this is gonna be going into my Fractal Node 804 that we have here. Um, it's an ITX case. It's got plenty of drive space. Uh, I think it's gonna do a good job. It's not gonna be a massive hog or a pain to put somewhere. I can put this on top of my server rack for now. And eventually, I do plan on setting up another server that's actually like an enterprise server blade. I have two of them laying around right now, an HP and a Dell that I got. They were gonna be recycled from work. So I picked those up, but I do not have a place to put them right now because they're enterprise blades. They're massive, they're huge. And those will end up being like a backup server for this. But for right now, I'm not gonna have a backup server. It's all gonna go into this Node 804. I picked up this for 150 Canadian. And that brings the total of this build to around $700 US, which is not too bad. Um, I did overspend on quite a bit. This is based on a build that JDM Watt did on serverbuilds.net. I will leave a link down in the description below if you wanna check that out. But a lot of this stuff is based on that. And again, the pricing that I got on both the drives and the HBA were both due to the server builds community. So I really do appreciate that. And without further ado, I'm gonna start getting this put together. If the recording for it comes out well enough, you'll get a build video. And if not, you're gonna to cut to me with a finished computer. All right, so the computer is built and didn't get build video for the whole thing because the camera up top there only can record for like 15 or 20 minutes before it cuts out from heat. So I got some parts, I mainly got the hard drive installation. So the front actually looks pretty, pretty clear, pretty good, um, not too messy. I think I did a decent job in there. And then on the back side, ah, it's very heavy. On the back side, we have all 
eight hard drives there. And I did have to do a little bit of finagling to get these drives in above the power supply. I had to use one of the additional SATA adapters, even though I didn't need the actual additional connectors. I needed one that had the cables coming out the sides instead of the back or else it wouldn't have fit properly. So I got them all fitting nicely. Um, no strain on the cables, which is good. The back doesn't look too terrible. But again, it is mainly covered by the hard drives. And then I can install another two and a half inch or three and a half inch on in the front at the bottom here. So I can actually install two more down here. And then I can, you know, you can throw SATA SSDs everywhere, um, the two and a half inch ones, but probably won't be going in here. And that's the build done. And we're in Unraid, took a little bit. I had to reconfigure the HPA controller to be in HBA or IT mode and not RAID mode. So that took me a little bit to figure out. Got it going though. And if we hit our drop down, we can see all of our drives here, which is amazing. Um, super relieved that there was no actual issues that I had to deal with. And I've already put the SSD into the SSD cache as a pool. So that's already set up. Now I'm gonna be doing the rest of this setup later. Um, I'm actually leaving for a conference tomorrow so I don't want to try to rush myself to get a bunch of things set up. As I mentioned, this video is more so just me getting the server ready, uh, my plans for the server, getting it built and getting it ready to go. Um, once I get back, I'll probably be, be taking my time to set it up, set up all of those pieces of software that I mentioned about um, and that I'm going to mention about in a couple minutes. And then also I plan on doing a follow-up video with the server once I get into a spot that I'm happy with. And yeah, so once I get back from that conference, I'll probably start configuring everything. I should be able to find the other hard drive that I was trying to find by the time I do that so that I can set that up as the parity drive. You want your parity to be the largest drive in the array. It has to be the largest drive in the array. So I planned on putting one of the eight terabyte drives in there. And yeah, then I'll start setting up all of my applications and kind of getting that going. So back to me at the table. Now, as I mentioned, I wanna do quite a bit with a server, which is one of the reasons why I put so many drives in it and you know a decent amount of money into it as well. I think this is gonna be something that's gonna serve me for quite a long time. And as I mentioned, there are quite a few things. So obviously first, I wanna use it as network attached storage, but I also mentioned I wanna do a bunch of self-hosting. Now, some of those self-hosting things are Plex. If you don't know what Plex is, it allows you to host your own media server. I was already hosting that on the other server and I plan on moving that over to this one. Home Assistant, which allows you to control your smart devices in your house, as long as they're compatible in your own house. So they don't have to go to the cloud if they don't need to. Some things require it to go to the cloud. It's a little bit complex, but it allows you to get a lot more customization with your smart home devices. And I'm really excited for that. I'm gonna be setting a Pi Hole, which allows you to do a lot of things, but the main one that people use it for is reducing the amount of ads that they see, whether it's on their TV, or their phones or their computers, all devices across the network, it allows you to kind of filter those out, which is really cool. I plan on using Homebox and I've already talked about Homebox before when I was doing my moving video, but Homebox allows you to do your own personal inventory system. I have a lot of totes and containers. I do things for camping, for the computers, for all that kind of stuff. And it's gonna be really handy for me to know where all of those devices are without having to dig through containers. Homebox is really gonna help me with that and allow me to you know, scan a QR code or an NFC tag on a container and then know exactly what's in that container so that I can figure out where I need to go to find my things. Now at the beginning of this video, I mentioned Nextcloud and it is a massive suite of applications or add-ons. You can do things from your cookbooks to photos to a calendar, and you can also sync that with your Google Calendar. You can have it so that it can store all of your eBooks, and then you can view them on any device. You can do notes, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. It's gonna be super handy. I'm really nervous, but excited to dive into that and get that all set up. 
I also want to put a cookbook manager. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use Nextcloud. There are two other really good options that I want to check out. One is called Tandoor and one is called Mealy. And the reason I want to set this up is I want to make it a lot easier for me and my family to share recipes with one another. Um, right now, you know, we're doing a lot of handwritten recipes and stuff like that. And now that we're all living quite a bit apart from one another, it'd be really nice to have one collaborative cookbook that we can all use and share with one another. So I'm looking forward to that. Another one is paperless, and this allows you to store all of your documents digitally. So if you want to keep digital backups of all your stuff, you're keeping it in your local network on your own computers and it allows you to do a really good job of backing up all of the paper documents that you may have. Another one is called Actual Budget and it is a budgeting software. So it is similar to a lot of the other budgeting softwares out there, but instead it's self-hosted. And I really like that aspect. It allows you to automatically import transactions from all your uh, bank accounts and your credit cards. And with Mint going away, I don't have a way to properly look through all my transactions. And some of these budget programs that are out there or apps or all of those, they can cost quite a bit of money and I'm not into that. So I'm looking forward to trying this out and seeing if it works. And one other thing that I'd mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video is Foundry. Now Foundry is what my tabletop group uses to play currently Pathfinder, but it can be used to play a whole bunch of tabletop games. And right now our DM hosts it and only turns on the server on his main computer whenever we want to play. But this way I can offload that from him, have it hosted all the time. People can hop in and out, do their leveling offline when we're not you know, taking up each other's time and all that kind of stuff. Now I also mentioned the two other servers that I have. At some point I do plan on getting those running. I really don't know what the timeline for that's gonna look like. Those are gonna be some good backup servers. And then I also plan on keeping that old tower at my parents' place and using that as an offsite backup um, for the really important documents. So I'm only gonna push particular things over there. I'm not gonna push everything, but I think that one's gonna be really handy as well to have some additional backups. Now that's it for now, but I do plan on doing an update video once I get all of those self-hosted apps running and I've got everything working the way I'd like it to. I'll be doing an update to the server, another video where I'm going to show you all of those things working, how I'm using them, and if people are interested, I can even start doing tutorials as to how I set a lot of that kind of stuff up, settings that I'm using, so on and so forth. This is a learning process for me as well. I've never used unraid thoroughly i've only used it through the trial and using a server of this scale and having this many apps running it's going to be a big learning process for me if anybody's interested please let me know down in the comments and i can do videos while i'm exploring or if you just want to see the end results let me know about that as well but this is going to be a fun little project for me it's going to keep me busy it's going to keep me entertained um, now that i'm living on my own and kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but I am really excited for the potential that this server is gonna uh, provide for me. And with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thought Time and Step Back, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any of the other videos relating to the new house, you can check out the playlist right up here. And if you wanna see a playlist that I'm gonna create for the server specifically, you can check that down in the description below. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.